Hello again, everybody. So you're probably wondering, hey, uh, Professor Shumway tells me I have to edit this news package with this SeaWorld footage. How the heck do I get started? Well, let me show you. I'll give you a few simple steps to get you going on editing this particular package. And this is a good workflow to follow when you edit any future news packages. Sort of keep this in mind. Use this as a reference when you're cutting those future stories that you're out shooting. This little guide may help you out, may save you a little bit of time, a lot of time, when you're working on those tight deadlines. So the first thing I have to do is make sure I go find the project that you copied over. You should have that whole big SeaWorld folder that you copied to your hard drive. So I'm going to go look for it on mine. So in the Adobe Premiere Pro opening screen, I'm going to open a project, and I'm going to navigate through my file system back to my drive. Of course, as you may know, I call my drive Tele 5560, my G Mini, and I'm going to go into my Premiere Projects. What I had done, if you hadn't noticed, that I renamed that master template. I kept one version of it empty, this sort of generic system with all the big folders, and then I made a copy of it, and I called it Premiere Projects, so it mirrors everything in the master template. So I left that one clean. This is the one that I, for lack of a better word, will dirty up with all my new projects, my January stuff, my February when we get into March, April, and so forth. So I'm looking for a February project because that's where I copied that big old giant SeaWorld folder. And let's open up a little bit bigger, and there it is. So it's got the date that we're starting, February 7th, and it's got the finishing due date listed right in the title. That's the exact same thing you should have copied out of that Dropbox folder, put it on your drive in the February folder. So all I have to do is open that up, and I know it's got everything I need it has a project file. It has all this captured media, all the clips or the actual movie video files. Uh, it's also got the graphic lower thirds. We're not going to use those on this particular one right now. Also place for my exports, my graphics, and look at this. In the documents, there will be a SeaWorld script. So the script in PDF form is also there. So let's do this. Let's get to the project and open it and tell Premiere that that's the one we want to open pull back out so we can see it in all of its glory. I'll take a sip of coffee while this happens. Okay, there's my project. SeaWorld is open. I have a blank empty timeline. I have a bunch of bins. I like to organize stuff, right? So I don't lose things in the wrong bin. I like to group them together. You know, just like you might put your silverware in a compartment in your drawer in a kitchen. So that's what I'm doing up here. I've got B-roll. There it is. I've got the reporter's voice track. Hey, that's nice. Sequence. Oh, there's my empty sequence sitting right down here. And I also have some SOTs. What I do is, I, again, I group all the interview clips and the SOTs into this bin. By the way, the DF and the DS, uh, those stand for the initials of the people that you see in the video, in the SOT. Okay, so I'm ready to start rocking and rolling here. I've got a project a blank slate <clears throat> before I go any further. I really need to look at that script because I'm going to use that as a guide. So back to my drive, Premiere Projects, it's February, we're going with SeaWorld, Ooh, there's all that captured stuff. We're going to navigate to the documents, and this is the final script, SeaWorld. So let's open that up, and I'm going to open it and kind of minimize it, and peri periodically I'll just keep looking at it to get a reference. So that's a basic package script format. It's got the slug date, total running time, the writer's name would be put in there, audio is over here, this is the anchor lead, this is what the anchor says on the set, on camera, and then we roll the package right here. And once the package rolls, everything else is self-contained in the package. That's why we call it a package. It's all wrapped up in one little nice box or package. It's going to open with a little bit of nat sound, splashing and cheering from the SeaWorld video. Then the reporter's track is going to come in. And this is all going to be the reporter. It's all recorded. I'm going to edit that in. We're going to have a SOT talking uh, from one of the whale trainers. We're going to hear a SOT from one of the SeaWorld officials. Another SOT with a jump cut. We're going to have to cover that. More voice from the reporter. Another SOT. And then the ending. And then there would be an anchor tag where we'd go back on camera to the studio. So here we go, that's my script, and I know the first thing I've got to put in is from this clip, it says use performance, two whales jump. Use nat sound for two seconds, splashing and cheering crowd. Then I'm going to fade that down and bring in the reporter. 
So I always start with these important audio and video elements. Whatever the opening shot is, the opening B-roll with the Nat sound, that always opens my package. I want that to be a crisp, nice, clean shot with good, clear Nat sound for at least two seconds. Then I'm going to fade that down and start my reporter's voice. So I will basically construct the main audio elements first. Let me say that again, audio elements first, so I construct all the sots, the voice tracks, the big gnat sound breaks. Then I go back in and fill in the B-roll. So let's minimize that. We'll come back to that as we work and back to our project. So I'm going to double click on these bins because I like to open them up as little tabs across the top of the project window. So B-roll, double click, and it opens in its own little window or tab. Reporter VO, that's there. Sots, that's there. Don't really need to open the sequence bin, it's just one bin holding my empty sequence. Now I've got a generic title, it's just called sequence. Eventually I will rename that before I turn it in. All right, so let's get started. I need B-roll, and you remember what the opening shot was? Well, the script told us that it was performance, two whales jump. So simply just go find that B-roll clip. Back to my B-roll b-roll bin, there we are. Uh, performance, two whales jump, that must be it. Oh, okay, here we go. All right, it's gonna, oh, it does have some good nat sound, that's nice. So let me take it, I'm just gonna JKL, right before they jump, there we go, let's back it up. So I'm gonna back it up a few frames, mark an endpoint. whales jump, the crowd cheers. And let's go all the way and mark the out point after that zoom out. So we'll go there, mark out. Now I'm simply going to cut this into the timeline. Before I do that though, I want to decide where I want to put all my sound. So this has got video with some NAT sound. It's a video source track with an A1, one single audio track. It's one of those stereo tracks where it put the left right into one audio track. So it wants to put it, Premiere does, in the timeline. This is the source side that references this clip in the source monitor wants to take that source material and throw it right across to the video one track and the audio one track in the timeline. Mm, sounds good to me. I'll put that there. But that tells me also, if I have NAT sound in audio one, that's going to be my now designated NAT sound channel. I don't want to put any SOTS or any reporter voice track in audio one. I'm going to put those down here in two. Got it? So I've already decided that video one and audio one will be the B-roll NAT sound combinations. So that's a good way to start. And then I'll lay in the other audio, the SOTS and the reporter's track will go in too. I want to keep them in separate lanes of traffic. I don't want to mix my voice tracks and my NAT sounds in the same track because I want the voice to play while the NAT sound is going as well. I want them layered, okay, so they'll be on different tracks. So let's just cut that into the timeline, a simple insert or overwrite, and there's my opening clip. Let's zoom in a little bit, because I'm going to have to do some keyframing. Notice the peak of my audio, if you're watching my meter over here. We're peaking right around minus 12, only because this is the opening sound of the story. It's my opening sound. It's the only thing the audience is going to hear for the first two seconds. So I want to max it, uh, average it to the full minus 12. Okay, right after the whale splash, okay, that's actually just past two seconds. So right about here, I'm going to keyframe and then drop the volume. Then I'm going to put in my reporter's track starting right about there. You got that? Simple, right? Okay, so that's all in place. Let's do a little bit of keyframing just to get started. I'll open this track up a little bit bigger. I click on it, there's my left-right pair in my stereo track. Let's mark a keyframe there. Let's go down a few, mark another keyframe, and I drag the second one down. That's my adjustment frame. The first one is the anchor frame. I don't want to drag the whole track down. So it's full volume up to here, then it fades, and the reporter's going to start right about there. Might drag it down just a little bit more. That's pretty loud stuff. So it's full out at minus 12. And then it drops to him, minus 24. That's pretty good. So now I cue to right about here. Deselect A1 and A, or Video 1 and Audio 1. Let's deselect those. Now I'm going to start putting in my reporter's voice, but it's going to go down here. So I will literally have both this sound faded and then full volume of my reporter. 
So let's go get the reporter's track. That's going to be in the reporter bin. Nice and neat, organized. B-roll, reporter, SOTS. Okay, skip around. News voiceover. There it is. Notice it's a stereo track with a left side all the way over here. I might have to do a little bit of remapping like we did with our Vosot earlier. Let's listen to it. It's all in one take, by the way, so it's not really going to, there's not like multiple mistakes and takes. Yes, it's another opening, another show. Okay, that's it. That's the first line of the VO. So I want to mark in. It's nice that I can see when you open up something that's just an audio clip, you only see the waveform. There's no video to go with it, so it just shows me audio. Notice down here in my timeline, it says, hey, you have an audio source. It's just one stereo channel with a left-right pair. It's A1 in the source window. But you know what? I don't want it to go to audio one in the timeline. And a Premiere is track sensitive. If I tried to perform an edit now, it would try to throw it right across here. That's why I turn audio one off in the destination. That's the timeline. That's the source. So I want A1. I drag it and drop it. This is a way to patch the audio. A1 is now going to go, the source clip up here in the window, is going to drop down here to audio 2. And that's where my reporter's voice is going to end up living. Open that up a little bit. Yeah, so right about here, that's my new endpoint, right, in the timeline. I've got out points. So let's go to the script again and see what I'm supposed to include. She talks for a while before the first sound bite. So here we go. She says, yes, it's another opening, another show, da 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 this is Believe, the new Killer Whale show. And she finishes this little chunk of audio by saying Killer Whales and Killer Whale Trainers. So I'm going to mark an out point after the word trainers because then I'm going to have to put in a SOT after that. Okay, so back to the clip. Let's listen for that bit where she says, uh, where she gets all the way to talking about the trainers. But not just any show. And it would take a lot more than an 8x10 glossy to get the director's nod for this project. This is Believe, the new killer whale show at SeaWorld, where the onstage talent consists of an assortment of killer whales and killer whale trainers. Boom. Okay, I hit K to pause, mark out. There we go. So I just have this chunk of the voice track marked, and I'm going to cut it in right here. So all I have to do is my overwrite, and there it is. So I have my opening gnat sound. Let's see how it sounds. Opening gnat. Fades. Yes, it's another opening, another show. But not just any show, and it would take a lot more than an 8 by. Okay, I'm eventually going to change the panning on this because we only have her in the left speaker, left side. We'll double that up so it goes left-right. But that's a good start. Nat sound with B-roll. I fade it, then bring in the reporter track. You always want that opening Nat sound padding, that two seconds of nice, attention-getting video, crisp, a great shot, compelling, some sound. Then you drop the volume enough to put the reporter's voice in. So my next stop is at the end of that voice, it calls for a SOT. So I'm going to put the SOT. I'm not going to worry about this big empty space right here. Later, when I'm done with all the audio tracks, I'm going to drop in the B-roll shots to cover whatever she's talking about. I'll lay in a shot of, you know, the trainers when she says the word trainers. I'll lay in a shot of, you know, the whales performing when she says that. So that's going to be smooth. What I'm going to do next, though, is get the first SOT. I'll go all the way up to the first SOT, and then I'll wrap this tutorial. So let me go back to my SOT bin, and the script is telling us that we're going to a whale trainer, and he says, there's behavior in the show where we turn on all the sprayers. He's talking about this big stunt that they do with the whales. So it's called SOT from the SA Favorite Behavior Clip. Let's go find him. SA Favorite Behavior. There he is. So I'm going to queue up his SOT. And let's go find him. That's it right there. I'm going to back it up. JKL. There he goes. No, notice how he says um first. So I'm just trying to cue it just before, or right after the um. If I don't get it clean, I can always trim it in the timeline later. But let me see if I can pick it up clean on the fly. For sure. Boom, right there. See, he's just about to... Start the next word, mark in. There's behavior in the show where we turn all the sprayers on, we get on the whale, and we zoom to the bottom of the pool, and we leap up out of the water, jump over the sprayers, come down with the whale. That's just plain fun. Great. 
That's just plain fun. That's my sot. Perfect. So what we have to do with him, notice in the timeline, it's telling us we have video source. There he is. We have an A1 audio track also from him, another stereo recording of his sot. We want to put his video on the screen. We do want to include the video now, so I'm going to reactivate video one so that what's going to happen is his video is going to go right here. His audio, his SOT, is going to be rerouted down to audio two right after my voice. Remember, all my voices now are going to live in A2 or audio true two. The news voiceover, then the SOTs, more voiceover, more SOT. A1 or audio one is going to be free for me to put in my NAT sound of the B-roll shots. So all I have to do now is I did in to out, one, two, three points to make an edit. Let's do another overwrite, and there we go. I'll back out a little bit so you can see. And let's listen to it and watch. There's our program monitor. Killer whale show at SeaWorld, where the onstage talent consists of an assortment of killer whales and killer whale trainers. There's behavior in the show where we turn all the sprayers on, we get on the whale. Do you notice, by the way, that his track is a true stereo track? He's got left, right. We've got both channels in audio, too. That's just the way it was recorded and prepared as a full stereo track. To the bottom. So I don't have to change the panning on the SOTs. Boy, that's a relief. One less thing I have to do later on. Leap up out of the water. Oh, see, he's peaking perfectly at minus 12. Jump. Hey, guess what? They recorded this audio correctly. Boy, it saves you a lot of trouble. Again, you record it right Here in the camera. The show where we turn all the sprayers on, we get on the whale, and we zoom to the bottom of the pool. Okay, nice. So I've got this thing started, as you can see. I've got the opening video with Nat Sound. I go to the reporter's track, go to the first SOT, and then what do I do next? Next edit point, what does the script tell me to do? Script says after he talks, we go right to another SOT, and it's from a SeaWorld official. It's called DS Show Concept. That's the name of the clip. So he, the guy says, these whales are amazing animals. All right, so I would just go into the next SOT. I would cut it in and just continue on laying SOTs, voiceover, SOTs, voiceover. Then I'm going to go back and stick in the B-roll shots that cover this little section with her voice. And then in, when I do the B-roll, the video is going to go into video one and the NAT sounds are going to go into audio one. So I would just have to patch my audio back from A1 to audio one when I start putting in the NAT sound. For now, I'm working on my voices and I'm putting all my voices down in two. So it's again, just simply going to the next one. Uh, we're finding the uh, next SOT show concept. All right, there he is. DS show concept. Let's bring him up. And I would just again go in and find, search to find his soundbite, mark in, mark out, and cut it in same way. His video is going to go to V1. His audio is going to go to A2 or audio 2 in the timeline. And just keep working your way that way. Once again, I get finished with all the way down to the ending uh, SIG out where the reporter says her name. Then I go back in and I have a total running time because all my audio will be laid out. I'll have her name. That's the ending out cue. This is Ann Parkin for Entertainment News. Then I know the total time of my story, and I can go back in and fill in just these extra B-roll shots in between the SOTs. So, for example, under this section where she says the production team, however, I put in a shot from the SA Room Discussion clip. Then I go to the performance costume change shot. Then the whale shot. So that's what you do. It's follow the script. Start with the audio elements first, that opening shot and that sound, then go to the voices, construct all that, and then fill in the B-roll, and you will do a much more efficient edit of your package if you get into that kind of workflow.